I'm taking my ordinary workstation ThinkPad and giving it a very custom hex camo paint job. Plus I'm printing on it and also some internal upgrades to boot. It's a ton of work and I'll show you every step so let's go. The ThinkPad W541 is definitely one of my favorite computers which is why I own two of them. On the used market you can get one of these for dirt cheap. With this machine the amount of performance you get per dollar is incredible. You definitely want the version with the 3k screen because it is amazing. Seriously just look at these specs. This computer is awesome. I consider myself somewhat of a minimalist except when it comes to computers especially ThinkPads. I keep trying to justify to myself to purchase a P50 or P70 series but it's more than double the price of this and you only get a marginal increase in performance. I could go on and on and on about computers and ThinkPads and buying them and all that, but you guys came here to see an idiot paint a laptop, so let's get on with it. Which I actually don't recommend doing unless you never plan on selling your computer because boy is it going to ruin the resale value. I'm attempting a semi-decent paint job and in order to do that I'm separating all of the components so basically fully tearing down this computer. Which by the way is another benefit of ThinkPads that you can actually take them apart and they don't make it impossible to do. At least for the older ones. I can't speak for the new ones because I don't own one but for these ones you can actually replace things, remove things, upgrade things, take things apart. It's just the way that all companies should do it. Since I'm totally tearing down this computer anyway to paint it, I figured I might as well do some upgrades while I'm in there and also clean the CPU cooler and give it new fresh thermal paste. I personally find teardown videos to be kind of mesmerizing, but you might not and that's okay. So feel free to skip ahead if this isn't your jam. I didn't want this to be only a painting video so I figured while I'm in here I might as well upgrade the CPU to a 4940MX. I actually wouldn't recommend doing this upgrade because it is marginal at best over the 4810MQ that comes with it. You only get a bit higher clock speed but with that comes more heat and I would recommend actually going with the less heat less clocks. I just wanted to be able to throw something more interesting into the video than just painting. Almost finished with the teardown and I didn't lose a single screw. After that it's on to some paint prep. I'm leaving some parts intact like the hard drive caddy and the battery and the covers for the RAM. I'm doing that so when I paint the bottom there's going to be a seamless transition between those parts. Ah uh, yes, here we are again, the most tedious part of every painting project, the sanding and preparation phase. I usually try to do this all in one shot and as quickly as possible because it is annoying and tedious, but it's also the most important part so I really should take more time but I don't care, I just want it done. Thank you. 
Now to make the hexes in my hex camo I need a stencil and I'm making that out of acrylic and I like doing that because it's very durable and you can use it over and over which I'm going to be doing a lot on this project. I was really stupid and I incorrectly set the laser height and that's what happens when you do that is the laser doesn't cut all the way through your acrylic and you feel really dumb and that's what happened here so yep gonna have to redo this. This stencil is where I took a wrong turn, but I'll get into that later in the video. I'm cutting this larger one into smaller sections because that will make it easier when I'm going to be painting the smaller surfaces like the sides of the laptop. And finally, redemptions of my earlier mistake. Look at how satisfying that is. <sighs> now I'm almost ready to paint, but I do have some very important things I need to mask off. Mostly the battery and the hard drive and other things I don't want to get painted or wet. And these cables. I make a lot of mistakes and one of the mistakes I made this day was painting my parts out in the very hot sun. The sun is an unrelenting nuclear laser that doesn't care about you painting your laptop. I did have one part warp on me a little bit, so lesson learned. I don't care what anyone says, camouflage is the best color, it's undebatable. Because it's not a color, it's multiple colors. Now I'm just waiting on the chief designer here for final approval before painting. And yes, okay, everything's good to paint, thank you. And with everything finally prepped and ready to go, it is time to prime, or prime time if you will. Now you might think that this paint job is ugly, and that's valid, I'll accept that. But you cannot deny that it is deceptively complex, with a lot of layers going on. I said in my first video, which is the mini ITX build, that I would kind of go more in depth on this particular paint scheme. And after experimenting a lot with these kind of patterns, I realized that if you put the lighter colors going up in the layer stack, it creates this kind of 3D effect. When laying the stencil layers, you don't want them to be exactly on top of one another. For each layer, you actually want like a one to two millimeter offset. And what this does is it slightly shows the layer underneath. Not a lot, but just enough to give it some depth. And once you've stacked from dark to light, you can then do another stack of light to dark. And each layer you're throwing on just adds more depth and more richness to the look. You don't want it to be super uniform. You want different pockets so you have kind of like an undulation of color. One of the things I actually wish I did differently on this paint job was my initial base layer. I should have shifted the stencil so that it's not a perfectly uniform grid like that. I don't think the symmetry looks bad per se. I just think that had I shifted it and tilted it off center, it would have looked more dynamic and more interesting. As you can see, it's quite complex with a lot of layers going on. And I'm not putting down super thick coats, which allows me to quickly set and release the uh, stencils on top of each other without having to wait a long time before they're drying. Like, I'm not waiting almost any time. I'm just taking it off, putting it back on, new color, taking it off, put it back on, new color, just like that. You can see the evolution with each layer giving more depth. Here's where I started to stray from my original vision. I didn't really want my stencil to be this large, but if I made it as small as I wanted, then I was going to lose out on the details of the stencil. I thought this size was going to be a good compromise, but it turns out I just really didn't like how large it came out. In my mind, I saw this having a more finished product look instead of a DIY kind of feel. The stencil actually came out really well, it just didn't have that feel I was going for. It was too large and a little bit too soft on the edges. 
And also same for this small stencil here. It came out okay, just the edges were too soft for what I was going for in my mind. And now finally, almost finished with painting, just a little bit more to go. Just waiting on confirmation from the chief designer and it looks like we are approved. I was thinking of ways of how I could clean up those edges so I thought maybe if I just give them like a dark stroke to be able to clean up the white areas so you have like a harder edge and this actually worked pretty well but I still was kind of upset with how it came out. It just didn't really have that look I was going for and I stopped just about here because I didn't know what to do. So I took a break, I gathered my thoughts, and I tried to come up with a solution to how I could make this exactly how I want it. I knew that I wasn't going to get the level of detail and precision that I was going for, so I needed to enlist the help of computers. If you ever want to import a real life asset to a digital world, just lay it on the ground and put a ruler next to it and take a photo. Now with one-to-one -one representation in the digital world, I went to work in Illustrator. These look real, but they're just my vector objects placed on top of that picture. Okay, admittedly, I did go overboard with the graphics, but that's kind of my style. And I guess while I'm at it, just make a complimentary desktop background in Photoshop. So how did I end up solving my dilemma? I very thankfully have access to some pretty cool tools. Being able to UV print my graphics is going to give me a level of detail and precision that stencils would never be able to give me. Here I was able to put a much smaller graphic on the laptop lid. I hadn't even thought of using the UV printer just because I don't have custom jigs made for this and I wasn't going to make them just for one project. Because if anything is misaligned or I print it incorrectly, I have to repaint the whole thing, which I did not want to do. I used clean wrap to do test prints, but the problem with this is once you take that off, you have to set down the piece in the same exact position it was in or it's going to be off. Every time I hit the print button, it was kind of nerve wracking because I didn't know if I was going to have to be sanding and repainting a part. Which if you look at that lid, you go, where did the stencil go? And that's because off camera, I redid that entire lid from scratch which means sand it back down and redo all of the layers all over again and hope it matches somewhat. Look at how small and detailed this is. That to me is just incredible. My only gripe is that slight ghosting of white around the main logo, and that is due to the fact that the lid is warped a tiny bit from the sun. So it's not perfect, but I wasn't going to redo everything just to try and fix that. I purposefully didn't clear coat anything until after I was done printing because I wanted to encapsulate the printing underneath the protective clear coat layer. It is a matte clear coat, but it does bring out some of the depth in the colors. The only other thing I don't like is on one of my graphics I try to go for like a transparency effect and I think I would have made this more dramatic with like a stroke or maybe some patterns within that transparency but it still came out pretty cool. And it looks like the chief designer is completely worn out from all of this work. Unfortunately, I don't get to take a nap because I have to now put this thing back together. Although I will admit I was really excited to see how this has turned out. I have never painted a laptop before and I just was really excited to see what it would look like when it was completed.
I think I was actually too excited because I forgot one screw and one little black piece. So I ended up having to take it pretty much all apart again and then rebuild it. So I'm not going to have you sit through that, but these shots right here are from the second time that I went through everything. I just couldn't do it guys. Those pieces would be haunting me forever. I had to put them in correctly. Now that it's finally completed, I'm just hoping it works. And it didn't when I first pressed it, but I realized it was just one part of the keyboard that wasn't plugged in correctly. <laughs> so it finally worked, and here it is in all its glory. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. This came out so much better than I anticipated and I'm definitely going to be painting more laptops in the future. There was only a few mistakes and a few things that I would have changed but overall I love it and I think it looks awesome. If you're inspired by any way and you paint your own laptop, please send me a picture because I'd love to check it out. I'm making a 5kW e-bike with a custom dash. 